Hey everybody, it's me, Zach, and welcome back to my channel! Oh my god, this is supposed to be the time where I come back and I'm like, oh my god, my voice is back, but it still does kind of sound fucked up. <laughs> it still does sound a little like I'm congested, so just bear with me. And also, I forgot to say, because he doesn't sit here that often anymore, but this is Potato, and he's here for, for the shenanigans today. Um, but hi, hello, how are you all doing? I hope you're doing well. This weekend, Amber Lynn posted a new video called We Need to Talk. We certainly do, because Miss Ma'am, you know, has been not super consistent with posting, which, again, for all the haters, <laughs> is fine. That's her prerogative. She's certainly allowed to do whatever she wants at her job. She's her own boss and she'll come back when she wants to for her and her supporters. So I'm so glad that she's back. I'm glad to see her back on the YouTubies. Hopefully this is the return of some kind of consistency on her channel because I wanna watch her. I wanna watch her. I like to watch her channel. So uh, she did post a lot of Q and A's while I was out and about sick um, on the Instagram and I did screenshot some of them thinking, maybe once I feel better, I'll go over these. But at this point, I think, you know, there's not a whole lot to say about most of them. A lot of it was her talking about people being fat phobic towards her. A lot of it was uh, her talking about whether or not she actually is or isn't demonetized, things like that. Just a lot of stuff that, you know, in general, we've talked about pretty much ad nauseum. I think she did mention at one point that Tommy got her roses for her anniversary, and by that, what she means is like them dating for four months or whatever, them knowing each other for four months. So I don't know, I think that's really funny. I, I've never been one to feel compelled to celebrate monthly anniversaries, but again, her prerogative, as always, I'm just sharing my opinion. <laughs> Like, I don't know, I guess like an occasional monthly like gift might be cute, I guess. I don't know. Not for me. Actually, honestly, if you want to get me a gift, just don't make it flowers. Like, I've never been a flower girly. I've never seen the appeal of flowers. For me, it's like they die. <laughs> they die. They go away. Like, I don't know. Not a great investment, but I know not everybody feels that way. That's maybe a hot take from the Zachary Michael. Um, And then mostly, I guess the only other thing to know is that she she posted one last Instagram story that said, I've had lots of fun the last couple of weeks answering questions. I go in and out of doing this, but I'm taking a break. You'll see me soon on YouTube. Much love. Which I think is interesting for a number of reasons, but maybe the most important reason is that, like, she made a point to tell people that she wasn't going to be doing these Instagram stories anymore, but she couldn't even do that for, like, YouTube. Like, she couldn't even initially, I know she's come out since and, like, given some updates on YouTube, but she couldn't even initially be like, you know what, I need a break from YouTube. But you know what she will do? She'll let y'all know she's not going to be on the Instagram. Uh, so anyways, I guess we're out of the Q&A era. I'm, I'm curious if that means more videos on YouTube or less. I don't know. We'll just have to stay tuned. We'll just have to wait and find out. But I think that's all I have to ramble about today. And honestly, truly, we should probably get to get to because this We Need to Talk video is 20 minutes long, which means it'll probably take me 40 minutes to get through while yapping. So it's another long video today for you all, unless this is just a, a nothing burger of a video. I don't know. I feel like it's just going to be her talking at us, to be honest with you. But, um, uh, I guess we'll find out. Let's get to, let's get to, shall we? Hello, hello. Hi. Vlog. <laughs> Ooh, vlog? I just wanted to point out the obvious, but my hair is a mess. She is super frizzy, and I have a lot of hairs growing mm. back from when, like, I lost a lot of hair from when I was, like, crimpy or uh -huh, whatever. Uh -huh. I do have a lot of hairs growing back, so. Ah, uh, we are back, back, back again, baby! Back, back, back again. It would not be an Amber Lynn Reed video vlog, etc. if she didn't immediately jump right out the gate. Right out the gate and be like, look at my hot mess of a hair. Which, I did tell you, listen, you know who who can have an empathy bone, a sympathy bone, who has several empathy and sympathy bones? Zachary Michael, because whenever I was vlogging in that little tiny closet of a hotel room that I had in New York City and the lighting was awful, I was like, oh my God, when I look, when I look at this camera, I look ridiculous. But right now, 
the hair is hairing. The hair is looking great. Actually, I do need to get my roots touched up, but that's already on the plane of agenda. But, you know, I can have some empathy, sympathy. But also, what I will say, just like it wouldn't be an Amberlynn Reed video if she didn't come on here and immediately talk about how bad she thinks she looks, it wouldn't be a Zachary Michael video if I didn't say, bestie, you look the same as you always do. Because, like, honestly, like... Truly, is this much different? Like, if I pulled up her last video, is this much different than how she looked while she was doing her makeup, like, before she got her makeup done? And actually, this kind of looks like she's got some makeup on that maybe she slept in or something, which is also pretty much par for the course with her. So, like, yeah. Anyways, you look the same as you always do, Bestie, but I'm glad we're back. I'm glad... You know, some things you just want consistency with. Sometimes you just want to look forward to the things that you've come to expect. And that's what I've come to expect over here on the Amber Lynn Reed channel. That makes it even more frizzy. Uh, hello, hello. Welcome Hi. To the video. Can you guys believe it? Because I don't even know if I can. I can't. I actually <gasps> oh, you know what? Oh my God, y'all. Give me just a second. There's this like feature on Google Chrome that I turn off so I can literally... <laughs> record 1,000 Pound Sister episodes, like screen record them. And if I don't turn it off or turn it back on for YouTube videos, my recordings of Amber Lynn always look real ridiculous. So we gotta, I, I gotta, I gotta restart the video. So sorry about that. Hello, hello. And by re, and by re, <laughs> and by restart the video, I just mean I had to reopen the browser, although now I don't know where we left off. Now I'm not quite sure where we left off, but thank you so much for your patience with this because I forgot that I had that little feature turned on. Uh, hello, hello. Hi. Can you guys We're back. Because I don't even know if I can. So I, I can't. I don't know where my tripod is. Oh, I'm going to see okay. some markers. We have a little wetness right here because oh. I just refilled the animal's water. Not we have a little wetness here. <laughs> No, we have a little wetness here. How did you get wetness right here on your titty? How did how did that happen? So on days that Tommy works, especially like I have the same like morning routine, uh -huh. wake up, take the dogs out, refill cat the food, dogs, dog food. Wait, take the dogs. Wait, did has she mentioned that Tommy had a dog or something? The dogs. I thought I thought she. I do feel like I remember her saying that Tommy had cats. This is crazy. Y'all are, y'all are, y'all bought a zoo. Y'all Matt Damon bought a zoo over here. What is going on? This is the other thing is like, I feel like I know so little about what her life in Wisconsin has looked like. And I also am just like so fascinated that she has like a specific routine for days when Tommy has to work. Water, it's just like every day, just my go-to. Uh -huh. They say that it takes 21 days to form a habit. I. I, I can see that being a thing for sure. It's just back. It's also so funny to me that like, I don't know, again, like she gets so excited about like very basic things. Like, I, I don't know, like as, as a human who has pets, like had pets prior to living with Tommy, did you not already have a morning routine where you got up and like fed your animals, watered them, took them out on walks, whoever, whatever, like... I'm like, why are we acting like this is something brand new? Have you not already been doing that with, for like Twinkie and Rarity and Wasabi? Back at home in Oklahoma, like my routine is just a little bit different. Okay. Having to form another routine, you know, here in Wisconsin is a little hard. Uh -huh. because, like, I lived alone for a full year, so now it's like different routines for different places. Are, are you? Are you? So are we living in Wisconsin? Would you say you're living in Wisconsin now? Are you ready to admit it? By the way, I finished. I'm actually working on the um, Camaro. Oh, wait. I told someone that I was doing the Corvette or Corvette. What is it called? Oh, <laughs> God. I don't do cars. But I don't do cars, but I do do Legos. It's a Camaro. Uh, I told someone it's a Oh my god, girl. She said, I, I completely forgot how to vlog. I don't know where my tripod is. I'm just let stuff fall over. Let's fucking go. <laughs> this is cinema. This is cinematography. It is not happen. Um, I saw on Instagram that I was doing the Corvette, but no, I'm doing the Camaro. I'm sorry. I got my cars confused. Oh, damn. Look at that. 
And then I also completed the Mona Lisa. Oh, I like that. Oh, that's so cute. I feel like this will look good in Tommy's living room. That's actually like, so fun. I wonder if you can hang it on the wall. That would be like a fun little quirky piece of art to have on your wall. I kind of want to get that. Listen, I got a lot of uh, blank space on some walls because things I never was was an interior designer, interior decorator, and uh, all, all of the things decorating my walls are, are leaving. So maybe I'll get a little Mona Lisa Lego. I would love to put that on a wall somewhere. That looks so cute. You can have it. I don't know what it is. Like, I really wanted to be the type of girly pop that did the Legos, uh -huh. completed them, and kept them. But it's like, I have done so many uh -huh. that I feel like I need, like, a designated area. Like, a designated room. Like, a Lego room. Okay, so then get room. one. All the Legos I've done. I've literally done hundreds. Uh -huh. Yes, that's a lot. But it's, it's more so about the building of it versus the keeping of it. Because it's like... It is, it is really, like, wild to me, personally, as somebody who's kind of a frugal bitch. <laughs> like, it is kind of wild to me that, like, these Lego, if you don't know, these Lego kits are, like, hundreds of dollars. And, like, I definitely get the idea of, like, oh, it's really fun to put together. And, but it, the part that's wild to me is, like, you're paying hundreds of dollars just for the experience of putting it together and you're not keeping any of it. That's what's crazy to me. Okay, once I'm done with this Camaro, like, cool, it's cute, it's fun, it's fresh, but it's like, me building the object is more enticing than keeping the object. Sure. If I had the option, girl, I'd have every single Lego I've ever, ever done. I'd have a little museum of Legos. Okay, like, then why? I, I wish, like, but. I don't understand why you wouldn't then. I don't, I don't understand, like, that's the thing. Like, I, I love the idea of, of being an adult and having like a hyper fixation on something. But this is, this is, and like, like really caring about that, right? Like really caring about it and taking care of the items and stuff like that. And it does seem like of all the various hyper fixations Amber Lynn has ever had in her life, like it does seem like Legos are something that have been very consistent in terms of hyper fixations, at least in the sense that like she hasn't completely abandoned it altogether. And so I don't, like, if that's something you really care about, then, like, let's do invest in ways to take care of it and ways to display it and ways to have them around your home. Like, I don't understand why we're not doing that, you know? It, it hasn't been that way. And, like, if in the future I do get, like, a Lego room or a spot to have all my you, Legos. You also, like, don't have to have a dedicated spot to it. Like, she did also used to, like, use them as, like, individual decorative spaces within her home. Like, she had some on, like, bookshelves and nightstands and stuff like that. Like, it's also okay to, like, spread your your passion or your interest around around your living space. I will say also, she probably isn't allowed to have like any kind of space because this technically isn't her home yet, as far as I know. I can see Tommy being like, nah girl, like this is my home. I I've I've invested in this space. I've I've planned and designed and decorated this space in a certain kind of way. I'm telling you, I will redo every Lego I've ever done and that's okay. And um, she'll spend hundreds of dollars. And this is one that is expensive and I'm okay with that fully. I feel like there's so much that I need to like explain and talk to you guys about. Yeah, let's and go. It's just like too much to do in one video. So I don't know. I need to make a list. Like, what are you looking at for this paper? Mm -hmm. I need to make like a list and just write down. Okay. Uh -huh. So I need to talk about these points. I should do them in these specific videos because it's just a lot. There's just a lot. I think specifically. Girl, what have you been doing for the past month? What have you? I would like to know. Like you haven't, you haven't had these thoughts in general to like write down and organize nothing, not anything. For this video, like I, 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 I shouldn't have to explain that I'm having mental health issues. I, I really am. Uh huh. And I look back at a year ago. And I was also having pretty bad mental health issues around this time. Okay. I like to reflect. I'm very much a reflector, and I think that's why I do a lot of journaling. I reflect. I like to, um... Y'all, I'm so distracted by this one strand of hair. Do, do y'all see what I'm talking about? It's just this one strand of hair. But I'm also just, like, outside of the strand of hair. Outside of the strand of hair. I... 
y'all know how I feel about when she brings up mental health stuff. Like, I don't, I don't doubt that she has a, a myriad of mental health related issues that are challenging for her. Um, I just don't understand, like, why she doesn't do anything about it. You know, like she she's sitting here talking about being such a reflector and how she had these feelings last year at this time, too. Which, by the way, I, I'm guessing based on like something I saw her post on Instagram and she she answered a question on Instagram about her mental health or something. And she was like, oh, my gosh, it's like seasonal depression. Like it's happened at this time of year for the past couple of years. Um, and, and I think, one, that's valid. Like, I think, like, seasonal depression fucks a person up. Like, it, it messes me up. Living in Chicago, once it starts getting, like, disgustingly cold outside, which, thankfully, we haven't yet. Or maybe not, thankfully, because I don't know what's going on. Like, why is it warm in November? Why is it, like, 65 degrees right now in November? Lots of great questions to be asked there. But also, like... I get that. I get that. But also, the thing that I guess I was going to say is, like, there are other things that happened at this time last year that are happening again this year. Like, she literally upped and moved her life to Oklahoma last year at this time. And, like, right now, she's seemingly upped and moved her life to Wisconsin, you know? So, like, there's other things that could potentially be, you know, part of the problem. Uh, you know, also the just general untreated mental illness... The general, like, understanding that she has BPD but has yet to do anything with it or about it. There's lots of things that could be the problem. Understand the way I feel. I, I don't know. It's just maybe it's because I grew up in and out of, like, group homes, children's shelters, and very much when sure. you're in that setting. They love a good, like... Let's express ourselves. Let's uh -huh. sit in a group, go around in a circle, and express yourself. So... I grew up expressing myself a lot. I grew up with so many therapists. Like, because when you're in foster care, like, that's what you do. Like, you're almost obligated to see somebody on the constant. Okay. And so I'm very accustomed to expressing myself, but, like, I'm not very accustomed to people actually caring. And that's, like, the sad reality. Like, there are go good foster parents out there. There are good foster situations and group homes i mean i'm not gonna lie i was in a good group home like it was an all-girls group home i i listen i i i am always happy to listen to like her experiences with foster care and stuff i'm kind of confused what I, she is for somebody who just like talked about how much she's used to expressing herself i'm like you're not doing a very good job of expressing yourself because i'm maybe it's because i paused or something but i'm unclear on what this has to actually do with, like, the way you're feeling at this time of year. But let me just let her keep talking, because maybe I just, like, don't understand. And it's also like, okay, well, express yourself to a therapist now. But anyways, let me let me just see what she has to say. Sorry. I, I'm just, like, kind of confused. Does this not feel, like, out of nowhere? I was there for about two years, and still to this day, there are girls I lived with there that I still communicate with and staff members. Okay. That was a good point in my life okay it truly was good but the children's shelter no um i had fun times there it was like slumber party constantly but the staff there they didn't they didn't care it didn't feel like they cared um they were there to make their money and that was that so it's like yeah i was taught to express myself but no one ever heard me no one ever was actually listening or caring and that's just like Kind of how I feel, too, sometimes with, like, YouTube is, like, I'll sit here and express and explain. And it's like, uh -huh. is anyone actually listening? I, I was wondering if maybe that was the connection she was going to make to YouTube. Because as she was saying that thing about, like, the staff at the children's home that she was at, um, just, like, being there to make money but not actually caring, it kind of... It kind of was reminding me of the Instagram story that she posted about me, where she said that, like... It was hard to determine if I cared or not because I was just here to to, to make money. Um, I think like what she it, it, that like very well may have been the case for her and her children's home experience. Like 
I, I'm sure, especially in all of those types of like industries and like the, the service and care industry, or what am I trying to say? I mean, like I provided the example of the education field that I worked in for many years prior to like stopping and just doing YouTube full time. It's like, there are a lot of people who go into that field, uh, who are not necessarily like the most empathetic, sympathetic, nurturing kind of people and do that work. Um, but you know, like a lot of people aren't going into those kinds of fields to just like make money, you know, like, I don't know. Now I feel like I'm like, I have a little bit of brain fro frog, brain frog. There is a frog just hopping up and down in my brain right now. And that's why I can't think no ba brain fog. But I guess what I'm trying to say is like, Either way, like, this this idea that she has in her head that, like, people are only doing stuff to, you know, like, not because they actually care, but because they need a job, because they need to make money. Like, that, that very well could be the case for her. Um, it's it's interesting that she's, like, connecting that to, to YouTube and, like, coming to YouTube and, like, expressing herself here and feeling like people don't actually care about what she has to say. Um, I don't know. I should have just stopped talking maybe five minutes ago when the when the frog started hopping in my brain and I lost my train of thought. Is anyone actually hearing me? I reflect back to a year ago and I was turning to alcohol and I was living on my own for the first time. It was just like a lot. It was I, I, I always also appreciate when she acknowledges that she she turned to things like alcohol and Delta 8 to help her with her feelings and emotions and things like that, which I think we can all acknowledge is probably not like a super healthy thing to do or like not a super great relationship with alcohol. Uh, like, so just like put a pen in that, bookmark that, because when she eventually inevitably starts drinking again and people bring up those concerns, she's gonna be like, you can do this and just have fun and there's not any problems. It was heavy and I was turning to alcohol thinking that's what was going to make me feel better and I was just really depressed and mm -hmm. like <clears throat> I would come on YouTube and sometimes I would share that or sometimes I would just like have a fake persona because I didn't want to be that person that would constantly come on here and be like I'm depressed I'm sad look at me cry look at me have a mental breakdown and I've done that a lot on YouTube where I'm just fully transparent and I cry. I just, I just, I just also, I mean, this is part of the, the problem, Amber Lynn, is like you just also said right here that like you put on fake personas, which is something that like inevitably people continue to like have an issue with, that you like present yourself online as something like you acknowledge and admit to, and this is not the first time that you've acknowledged and admitted to, like acting different online. And I think that that's why a lot of people find it hard to trust you and hard to, hard to care about you. I think one of the Instagram stories that I might have screenshotted but didn't, didn't like talk about here is just like her talking about like what it would take to like rebuild and regain trust with her audience. And it's just like, you really need to commit to coming on here and being consistently yourself and consistently authentic. And like, there will be people along the way that are not gonna like believe that that's you. But every time you come back onto the internet and you're like, oh yeah, remember when I was like, blah, 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 blah. Well, I, that was, I was putting on a fake persona. I wasn't being the real me. Um, and I get it. Like, I think there are definitely things that you got to protect yourself from. And even if your job is to vlog your life, that doesn't necessarily mean you have to vlog every aspect of your life. But when you come on here and acknowledge that, like, some of the things that you have chosen to vlog were not you being yourself wholeheartedly, I think that that's, that's an issue. Now, what I could see her saying right now, and, and maybe this is what she's about to say, is like, and th then it definitely does make sense in this case if, like, your whole thing is that you don't want to come on and pretend to be fake or, like, pretend to be something you're not and you've been struggling with your mental health and so you just opted not to come onto the internet. Like, I think that's fine. And I just, like, want to be clear about that because, th you know, like, there's some, some comments, like, whenever I click into YouTube Studio and I get, like, to, like, look at other stuff or, like, to upload new content or things like that, I get little, like, snippets of the comments section and I saw is this car outside I saw a few comments that were like Zach this is your karma which by the way like I wasn't saying that I was not uploading because of my mental health I was not uploading because of 
I literally couldn't talk. But anyways, people were saying this was my karma for the ways that I've, like, talked about Amber Lynn and her mental health and things like that. And it's just like, no, like, I always support her or feel like I've mostly always supported her, like, taking time to step away um, or at the very least in, in most recent history, in the past couple of years, whenever she's had to take time away. Like, I'd much rather her prioritize her mental health. I, I would love for that to also include, like, going to a therapist about it. Um, so hopefully that's where she's going with this. Is like, I didn't want to be fake on the internet, so I took, like, a month-long break, and that's where I'm at. But also, like, acknowledging in any kind of way that she's presented a fake version of herself on the internet I think is also perhaps questionable. All right. I open up about my anxieties. Um, what was it that I said that people <laughs> really like to bring up? Mental things is scary. Um, uh -huh. In that clip, I was having so much anxiety that, like, the world was just heavy on my chest. And that's just a prime example of, like, times where I really did come on here and just, like, I let it all out. And... I told myself that I wasn't going to do that this time because when I do do that, like it's never, I'm not going to say never. I talk in a lot of absolutes uh -huh. and I need to learn how not to do that because not everything is an absolute. It's just how it is. There is always like a gray area in most situations. I was about to say like, I was never met with like kind ears. I was never speaking to uh -huh. kind hearts, but that's not true. There are okay, a lot of people okay. who do watch me and care uh -huh, about me. Uh-huh. And those people, like, I appreciate you more than you know. Well, I think that's I think that's also the thing is that like a lot of people have gotten genuinely frustrated when you come on and you talk about all of these very, very like serious mental health related issues you're facing, you know, like the the myriad of diagnoses that you've gotten over the years and like you've done nothing about and like I think a lot of people have reached a, a very high frustration level by you utilizing BPD as, like, an excuse for bad behaviors and things like that. And then when people ask, like, what you're doing to work on it, you, you give them nothing. And I hear you and I see you, but sometimes it's so hard through all the noise. And that's just reality. It's truly sure. reality. Sure, 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 So sure. I told myself this time, like, okay, Berlin... <laughs> You feel yourself slowly getting into a weird, depressed headspace. And normally I would share that with YouTube. And I told myself, I'm just going to disappear instead. Okay. And I shouldn't have done that. I know I shouldn't have. A lot of you were worried. And I think uh -huh. that's why I went on to Instagram is because, like, I felt bad because it's like, I upload pretty frequently and people, I'm part of people's routines, uh -huh. whether for good or bad. And it's just like, I just disappeared. And I think what might have also triggered it so hard is like, I have been in like a high, you know, when you... I, I guess, yeah, I'm just, I'm just fascinated by like, yeah, I, I pre well, let me start off by this, just in case like people don't feel like I have enough positive to say about Amber Lynn. I do appreciate that she's like, I did just disappear and I shouldn't have done that. I, I am fascinated though by her follow up of saying like, so I went on Instagram. Well, a lot of people, like if you even just look at her follower account on Instagram versus her follower account on YouTube follower count I listen 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 we we all struggle um anyways she just like not the same number of people are are looking to see what she's doing on Instagram as they're doing on YouTube and like even if she has some overlap there not everybody who follows her on YouTube is is going to look on Instagram to see what's going on so that's that continues to be my thing of like why did you not just like let people on YouTube know sooner first of all in love and like things are so good and you're like going out and you're hanging out with friends and you're doing things that like you don't normally do and you're just like literally having the time of your life and you're uh -huh. so happy uh -huh. and like mental health like takes away that like high that super high happiness and just like that great feeling um when that was taken from me it was like i hit i hit like a rock i hit like a bottom and i have done so much crying like i am with tommy I am with someone that I love. 
Uh huh. But I feel so depressed. <laughs> and it's like, it's not fair because it's like, I'm getting people on Instagram because I was doing these Q&As on there. I was getting people on there saying like, if you're so happy with Tommy, then why are you depressed? Two things can coexist at the same oh, time. Oh, absolutely. I just feel like mental health isn't black and white. And it was just easier for me to like live I absolutely 100% agree that, like, you know, she can be very happy in her relationship and still be depressed or, like, uh, have bad mental health in other areas of her relationship. I think one thing, if if she's listening, she's probably not. I don't know. It depends on if she's, she's watching my channel right now or not, if I'm still her guilty pleasure or not. But, like, I also think what people are trying to get at with those questions is, like, you have said the way that your mental health works is, like, you get, like, you go all fucking in on a new relationship, like, immediately. And it's, like, clear that you were, like, experiencing some high highs with that, right? And now you've crashed down and you're not getting the same highs you, you were once getting from that, like, brand new relationship situation. And so... I think that's what people are concerned about. They're like, you've been coming on here and talking about how great and wonderful your life with Tommy is, but, like, obviously there's still room to grow, and, like, maybe you need to work on yourself outside of this relationship, which is an ongoing, like, lengthy narrative on your channel of, like, you you centering your life around a person, which can be a thing, from my understanding, with BPD, but then doing no work on yourself live without filming my life for thousands and thousands and thousands of people it felt safer to me to just disappear sure and i do slowly feel myself getting like out of this like weird let's fucking go depressed headspace let's fucking I go i do feel that and it's just like i have bpd and that's been like hectic on like it's just been hectic. It's not fair that, like, I have these things while I'm trying to just, like, be happy and just live. Well, like, well, unfortunately, you have it, okay? So this is the part where we, like, decide what we're going to do with that. that. This is the part where we work on it. We all have a lot of things in our lives that, like are unfair in different kinds of ways. And, like, one thing about having, like, a mental health disorder is, like, yeah, it fucking sucks, and you got to work on it. And that's, like, the only way you can get to this place of happiness that you're looking for is if you take time to work on it. Like, it's not... It's not fair. It just doesn't and go away. Like, really, one thing I can magically. do... Magically. <laughs> go to therapy. Let's go. But Let's go. I'm so scared to go to therapy for, like, BPD. Let's go. I, I don't know what it is, but something about it really freaking scares me. And I think it's because it's like, it's almost as if it's like truly, truly confirming. Like, Everlyn, you got the BPD. It's like, yeah. What, what do you mean truly, truly confirming? You have, you have rested on BPD as an excuse for all of your bad behavior in the past year. What do you what do you mean truly truly confirming? You confirm it any chance you get on this channel. You confirm it out loud every time you log on to this goddamn app. What do you mean it would truly just go to therapy? Stop with the excuses. It's so frustrating. Diagnosed. I experience BPD things almost daily. I feel it. I'm aware. Like I'm cognizant of it and I have to deal with it but it's like going to therapy for it like having to like stare at it talk about it the the reason she doesn't want to go to therapy for it is because she would have to hold herself accountable she would have to actually do hard work and like we can do hard things and I'm not convinced Amber Berlin can you know like you you have to be willing to do hard work and Amber Lynn doesn't want to do that like, Amberlynn doesn't want to, to sit in discomfort. Like, go to therapy or, or shut up. Like, shit or get off the pot, you know? Like, I'm, I, that, that probably, especially if this is, like, the first time you're ever watching one of my videos or Amberlynn videos, I think could come across as, like, insensitive, crass, etc. 
But the, the context of Amber Lynn on her channel is like claiming diagnoses of different conditions for a long history of time, which is fine. And then refusing to, like, do anything about it. Refusing to take advice from medical professionals on it. Like, in some cases, she'll go to doctors about things and then just, like, completely ignore their advice. Like, acknowledge that she's not taking their advice. Acknowledge she's not doing what she, they told her to do. And it just gets, it gets tiring because there are a lot of people, like, do, that do genuinely care about her. Even if she thinks that I do not. And, like... It is frustrating to watch somebody, like, choose to not do what would be helpful to them, you know? It's frustrating to log on time and time again and see somebody choose to do something or not do something, in this case, that could really help them. Very frustrating. It's just surreal, and it's not something I want to do. Not something I want to experience, but it's like... That doesn't matter. It's something it, that I it have sure to doesn't. do. It sure doesn't. Yeah. Call and a therapist now. ZocDoc.com. PsychologyToday.com. Let's go. Not sure when I'm going to be doing it, but it has to happen because I've just, I've, I don't know. Is this seasonal depression? Now I'm, I don't know. Mental health is like, it's one of those things where it's like, it's not. It's, it's all, all of it. It's all of it. And you know what's going to be the most helpful for all of that? therapy go to therapygirl.com it's understood and i'm telling you guys i have had some breakdowns like true i believe breakdowns, it and this is exactly how i felt a year ago like i don't know if it's like the change in weather it's it's it very much could be the change of weather contributing but like you've already acknowledged it's bpd girl it's bpd it's been bpd all along because there is a such thing as like seasonal depression i don't know if that's like what's happening to me i don't know i know that like i don't want to be medicated i don't I don't want to be medicated. There, I was medicated for. There are other options. There. Why are we automatically jumping jumping to like medication? There are several other options like therapy that you haven't even tried yet. Majority of my life, again, because in foster care, like I was diagnosed with depression at the age of nine, and put on Prozac. Like that's crazy. Like nine year olds should not ever have to deal with that. Um, so I've been in and out of medicine my whole life, and I was taking Lamictal for five years because I was diagnosed bipolar years and years ago. So I was taking Lamictal for that, and I don't ever want to be... You, you know what you were also not doing while taking Lamictal, from my recollection and knowledge, going to therapy? Like, I do remember her talking about taking Lamictal on her channel, and the the only time she was consistently going to therapy was when she was working towards weight loss surgery. And that's it. That's all. Like, I do not understand what we're doing here. Try therapy first. Try therapy first. Try therapy first. Communicate with your therapist, with your psychiatrist. Tell them, like, I don't want to jump immediately to medication. I want to work on myself. I want to find ways to manage th this mental illness on its own. Oh my God. Oh my God. I need water. Put on medicine. So it's like with BPD and seasonal depression, like I know some people take meds for seasonal depression. I get that. Me, I kind of just like, you, you don't even have, like, a, a diagnosis of seasonal depression, by the way. You're just saying that you do. Like, it, is it not still possible that the, the major underlying cause here is BPD, girl? Like, let's talk to a therapist. And instead of, like, complaining about it, I just disappeared. Because I knew that's what was going to happen. I was going to come on here and be like, I am so fucking happy with Tommy, but I am depressed. Uh -huh. Because I am going through a depression that I seem to go through every single year. And then with BPD, it's, like, there are medicines that can, like, help with, like, your mood. Like, there's nothing that can, like, heal a BPD. Like, you're not going to, like, be healed with medicine. Sure. It's not going to happen. Sure. Um, I will say that, like, Lamictal did help with my BPD as well. I'm not going to lie. 
but I don't. You didn't. Want to you didn't even know you had BPD when you were taking Lamictal. And also, then if that's the case, then like let's take Lamictal again. Like, just like the this video being so far like 13 minutes of her talking about why she's avoided doing anything meaningful to try to help with her mental health outside of maybe like the break that she took from YouTube. It's actually so frustrating. Like, I can't believe there's still seven minutes of this video left. ...medicated, and I think that's a personal choice, and that's okay. So it's easier for me to say I don't want to be medicated, so I don't have the... What am I going to say? I don't have the option to complain, which I really do. It's like, it's no one's fault that they have mental illness. Right. It's no one's fault. And... agree. I think that We're on the being same medicated page. should be an option. Because that is serious, and uh -huh. I don't like medicine. You guys know that. What? Who? Who is forcing her to take medicine? Who is? What? I did I miss? It does sound like, and maybe this is just like unpacked trauma from her childhood or something like that. Like I, I do understand this notion that, like, as a young person, she was put on medicines that she probably had no idea, like you know, what it was doing, the purpose, etc. But you're an adult now, so just tell the, the professionals that you're working with, or in this case you're not working with, but like hopefully someday are working with, that you don't want to automatically jump to medicine. You want to try other things, because let's be honest, you haven't tried other things, specifically for BPD. But what I do have an option is therapy. So uh -huh. with BPD, therapy can very much be the main thing that helps with people with BPD. It's DBT therapy. I need to do it. Everyone and their mama and their uncle recommends it to uh -huh. me, and I need to just go for it. Then let's um, go. But I want you guys to know that, like, I haven't been not uploading because I'm lazy or because I don't care about you guys or because of anything like that. I, also, didn't you already upload a video explaining why you haven't been uploading? Like, I don't... We already addressed that in that little, like, get ready with me video. It started as, like, okay, I'm going to spend some time with Tommy. Even though in the back of my mind, like, I slowly felt this depression coming. And it happens every year. I have to be, like, very cognizant of that. I have to, like, say that because a lot of people are, like, blaming Tommy for my, like, lack of uploads. No. no. She has been so supportive. And she's just, like... She understands that I need a break, but she's also, like, very encouraging when it comes to, like, things that I enjoy and love. And she knows that I love YouTube. Uh-huh. And she's like, you know, upload when you want, but she's always, like, giving me cute little ideas. Like, we want to do the... Y'all, I gathered so many questions for you guys, and I like to physically write. Uh -huh. So, um, I gathered so many questions from you guys for me and Tommy to answer. So, that's something that's still, like, up in the air... I, at first, I was like, I don't want to do this. Oh, oh, oh that, that's that's definitely a dog that's not Twinkie. Okay, sorry about that. Amazon was delivered. What was I saying? So I got these so I can write down your guys' questions so Tommy and I could, like, pick them out randomly so they weren't in, like, any specific order. We were uh -huh. like, make it a series maybe or do it all in one video, but the video would be, like, hours long, I feel like, because oh, there's a lot of questions, you guys. So many. So we went... We went through phases where we were like, yeah, let's do this. And then I was like, no. And then she was like, no. And then we were like, yeah. And now we're kind of currently at the stage of uh, like, sure. <laughs> God, just do it or don't. <laughs> just do it or don't. Why not? So there are a lot of questions. Um, so it's like, why Why did I even bring this up? I forget. I don't oh, know, girl. Amazon guy distracted me. What was I saying? Okay. I remember now. It's because... <laughs> Some of you are blaming Tommy for uh -oh. not uploading when no, it's like the complete. I, I was not blaming Tommy. I I that's that was not my personal thoughts about why Amberlyn wasn't uploading. Opposite, like she's super supportive and like whatever I do, and she's just super sweet and amazing. Um, so yeah, this is for that. Okay. So I'm gonna write the questions on here and then like fold them up and like. I want to put them in like a clear I don't, vase. Girl, I, think I don't really care. With like the colors. Girl, I you don't guys care. Are me, there's so many questions. This angle's hectic. But I just. Girl, this has been the angle almost the whole entire video. This has been the angle the almost the whole entire video. I don't know. Like, I I need to do my job. All right. I need to Clock come in. on here. Clock I need in. to be myself. 
Yes. I need to be myself. Like, yes. I need to be myself. Absolutely. Like, I grew pop- Look out, cause here I come. And I'm marching on to the beat I drum. I am brave. I am true. I am who I'm meant to be. This is me. That's what I just got from her. Okay. But Kiala Settle, she is not. Clarity in being myself. I have lessened in popularity by watering down who I am. That's eye-opening. That the Amber and Lynn that like has more personality and like shows more of like her vulnerable side and like isn't afraid to be like, yeah, this is me. Like that Amber Lynn is the Amber Lynn that people came here for. I'm gonna go ahead and assume. As much as people like to talk shit and say what they gotta say, which is a lot. Deep down, it's like you're here for a reason. I'm assuming, so I don't know. <laughs> like she is just saying a lot of nothing. This is just a lot of nothing. It, it, at the most, what she's saying now is like. Again, and this is where she gets herself caught the fuck up because she's like, I haven't been myself. I haven't been acting like myself. Well, what is the real fucking you then, girl? Because even when you want to go back, like, several years, you said that the, that was just you trolling. That that was you being entertaining, too. So, like, I don't know what is real and what is not. Like, this is... Just come on here and be yourself, and that's how you're going to, like, continue having an audience, bestie. I don't know what to tell you. Anyways, um, oh, and I uploaded a TikTok and an Instagram of calling myself, like, a fat squirrel because the sound went viral because this lady on TikTok really uh-huh. loves, like, uh, filming a squirrel saying, look at this morbidly obese squirrel. Like, it's literally so funny. And- I, I do, I do remember that. I remember seeing it on Instagram specifically, probably not TikTok, and I think I saw somebody in my Twitch community say that she took it down or it got taken down. It was, like... The audio was with her, like, eating chips, which, like, I don't know why she's playing with fire on all these platforms about, like, acknowledging that she's eating a lot of food or things like that or, like, making fun of herself for those kinds of things and things like that because, like, YouTube at the minimum is, like, looking at her channel and, like, like evaluating, you know, does this violate our terms of service when it comes to, like, self-harm and stuff like that. And TikTok and Instagram thought that I was bullying myself. So they took it down because they were like, you're bullying. And I was like, no, I'm not. Well, there you go. It's just so funny. And like so many of so many people have used that sound because the original has 8.1 million likes. So, so many people have used that sound and they're not getting their stuff taken down, but they took down mine because Dis- I thought that I was bullying discrimination. myself. Discrimination. Discrimination. How dare you treat Amber Lynn that way? Instagram and TikTok. And I was, I had to like reach out and be like, I'm not bullying myself. Like I did like in a little appeal thing, but TikTok still was like, no, you're bullying. And I'm like, girl, who am I bullying? Like, bullying. Was so fucking cute. Like, I was scrolling the TikTok and when I saw that squirrel and I heard the sound, I was like, that is genuinely, like, that made me laugh. I was like, I need that, like, laughter. Uh-huh. So then, you guys know me, like, I'm, like, a comedic girly, like a troll. Like, that's funny. Like, At first I was like, girl, you're no comedian. But then she called herself a troll. This is what I'm talking about. And then like weeks from now when she wants us to take her seriously and nobody's taking her seriously, she's going to be like, why do you all think that? And people will clip this, show this this clip of her talking about how she's a troll. And she'll be like, well, that's not what I meant. That's not, that's not, you shouldn't have taken that seriously. To me, that's funny. That's lighthearted, in my opinion. It's, it's funny to me. Like, sometimes you gotta take a dark situation and you gotta make it funny. I have been so depressed. I have okay. been self-loathing. Uh-huh. After time of, like, finding myself and loving myself. But it's like, mental illness, folks. Mental, mental illness. <laughs> mental it's illness. Not, it's Go. not fun. Maybe, maybe instead of posting goofy TikToks calling yourself a fat squirrel, maybe maybe just try therapy instead. Have we considered that? By the way, my bra, like this is so hexagonal. My bra has a little like lump right here. And you guys want to know why? Tell I'll me. I'll take my phone and I'll be like, oh, 
fuck a purse. Fuck a, like, a pocket. Like, most of my dresses have pockets. Fuck a pocket. And I'll stick it right here. And it's, like, in the same designated so, area. So and I've had small for so long, so it's, like, So gamey. quirky. My phone has made a lump right there. So, so random facts. So, right. so quirky. My quirky girl, I've missed you. Thanks so much for coming back to YouTube. Uh, hey, guys. So, I don't really know what the point of this video was. I don't but, either. Um, I just needed to get a little bit off of my chest. Just a little bit. There's more there, trust uh -huh. me. You guys will be hearing more about it. I need to be myself um, uh -huh. to the best of my ability. I will still have a wall up. I'm still going to have a wall up. There is a lot that has happened in my 11 years on YouTube that has made me like take steps back, lots of steps back. Like I'll take one step forward, five steps back. And right now we're gonna take a couple steps forward and we're gonna try to stay there for a little bit. Okay, please. We're gonna try to stay there for a little bit. All right, wrap it up. Um, I'm done rambling. <laughs> I'm gonna go open my Amazon package. Let's wrap it up. I think it's up. a new perfume. Oh my god, you can't show us? It's actually not a new one um, completely. I mean, it's a new perfume, but it's a perfume that I just recently emptied. And I was like, this is one of my favorite perfumes. It's like Ambery Vanilla or something like that by Dossier. <laughs> I could be so wrong. But um, it's like one of my favorite it's, perfumes. It's one of my favorite perfumes, but I couldn't even tell you what it's called for sure. So, but it is my favorite. Just just take me, take me on my word. Can we wrap this up, Amberlynn? We got 20 seconds left. And I'm telling you, so I used it all, and I said, your girl needs to order another one. So that came in the mail, and I'm super excited. Anyways, I'm done rambling. I love right. you guys, and thank you guys for being, like, so okay. kind. There's so many of you who are like, Amberlynn, take your time. Right. You owe us nothing. So thank you to you, those. You don't owe me anything. Are patient with me. It's true. I greatly appreciate that. Let's go, I though. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you I'm, next The week. place where I'm not feeling patience is waiting for you to end this video. Bye. Oh, bye. <laughs> See ya. All right. Well, did you en did you enjoy hearing about Amberlynn's return I, once again to YouTube, um, talking about all the reasons why she doesn't seek out therapy? I mean, for me, it's like put up or shut up, honestly, when it comes to anything related to her health. Like, I, I will say, yes, she's very right. Like, I do make money from posting this content. And also, like, I genuinely do hope that she gets mental health treatment just like I hope that for for most people uh, I, I think like therapy is helpful to even people who don't have as serious mental health concerns as Amber Lynn does um, so like I hope that for everybody I think we should all be taking care of our mental health I literally have a therapy appointment in about 40 minutes okay like I'm, I'm not just yapping I practice what I preach when it comes to mental health like I care about it a lot I think it's so important I think it drastically has the power to like change our lives for the better and it's frustrating to hear her come on and like certainly yes take time away from the internet do what you got to do like I have actually suggested to that to her in the past i'm supportive of her when she does it regardless of what some people think i just wish that she would do those things in tandem with therapy but here we are just a, another day in amberland <laughs> another another day in amberland where uh you know it's easier to just talk about all the reasons that therapy is scary instead of just like taking accountability for her life at her big old age so that's all i have for today i hope you enjoyed this stay tuned for our 1000 pound sister coverage because i know that through my sickness last week i missed last week's episode so stay tuned for that come join me on twitch.tv slash the zachary mike i'm streaming monday through thursday this week and uh, if you're brand new here, make sure to subscribe down below. Hit the bell button so you get a notification every single time I post a new video. Make sure to leave me a comment, hit like, click share, and follow me on all my social media. I had so much fun today. I hope you did too, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!